getting an idea how this Freedom 17 is going to look. Man, we clamped a, clamped a batten on the shear, the shear line, the gunnel. Been sanding on these stations all night, and they're actually faring out pretty well. Really can kind of get an idea what kind of shape we're looking at now. Hmm. That's going to be cool. This side's not sanded. There's a bunch of imperfections up here, but I can sand them out. Wow, encouraging. Hello, shop dog. I like this warm floor in here. All right, so when we last left off, the molds were a mess, and I've spent two evenings sanding on these, and we've got these really smoothed out. There's just a couple of places where there's slight little imperfections. And quite honestly, I think I'm gonna just fix that with like duct tape. Cause we gotta tape over all these anyway so that glue doesn't stick to them when we're putting the strips on. But like, uh, well up there where it says Freedom 17, that should be number five. You see that little tiny dip in there, right? right above the freedom. It's not terrible, but it's not perfect. Something else I noticed is I got a batten on the top of here and it's just sitting there. Um, okay, like that station there, the batten's not touching the top of the station. There's one up here in the front like it too. All right, there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back, and I may have just sanded on them just a little too much, but I'm gonna go back in the book and look at the profiles and make sure that my profiles are right. But I have to remember that I've got two extra inches on these bottoms, because I didn't wanna run the risk of getting too short down here. But now what I'm doing is I'm thinking about making these stations all equidistant. And I was like, well, we can tack the batten on the top and then worry about the sides and try to get each side straight and everything, which we're gonna do, but I had a bright idea. So I know that I'm 12 inches in between stations. So you can see there we go from 12 up to the front facing of that one's 24. So the front facing of this one's right at the end of the yardstick, 36. But because of the um, fact that the plywood's 5 8 thick, I gotta subtract 5 8 off a foot and so I should have 11 inches and 3 eighths um, in between pieces of plywood. So I got this big tube and I can't remember what we got in it. Um, it was just like a shipping tube. And it's been laying around up here in the shop for a long time. It was pretty big. So I went and I marked on here at 11 inches and 3 eighths, you can see my line going around it, and I gotta figure out how to saw that. But I'm thinking, if I can get that dude straight, I can just take that and put it in between each one of these sections, and it'll give me a nice measurement with a pretty big diameter that I can put in between there, and then I should be able to get them all straight. Never done it that way before, but sometimes you come up with these bright ideas Sometimes in the middle of the night. Hmm. All right, more in a little bit. Okay, so we'll see what happens. I set my fence at 11 and 3 eighths. So even though I'm marked on my tube, I'm gonna try to cut this thing with the table saw. And we straight up and down, we are. Let's get the blade up as high as we can go. Actually, I'm gonna have to roll it anyway, so that's probably good enough. All right, here goes nothing. <laughs>
about how tall Station 5 is. So I come down here and I look at the profile. That tells me how tall it's supposed to be. Right there. One foot seven inches, 19. And six eighths is three quarters plus a sixteenth. Three quarters, 12, 13 sixteenths. Except I added two inches on the bottom of every station. So that should be 21 and 13 sixteenths. 21 and 13 sixteenths. So I've got my yardstick in there and it's short. I am at 21, about 5 eighths. I'm a 3 16 short. Okay, so I thought I, I had a thought to lift this station up off of the strong back by 3 16 but uh, I was afraid that that was going to monkey with the rest of the shape and with the shear line. So what I've done is I've cut a batten as about a oh, quarter inch and I've tapered it on the ends. Uh, I made it 16 inches and you'll remember that we had this little imperfection right here that's got a little dip to it. I think this is going to fix all of it. I marked the center line on it so I'm going to match that up right with there and we're just going to bend that down on there and tape it down. And I feel pretty sure that that should fix my issues. It doesn't monkey with the shear line. And it fixes that little gap over there. And that piece of tape's not sticking very good. Now we're covering over all of this with um, masking tape. But I believe that's gonna, I believe that's probably gonna fix my problem. Look at that. She's laying right on there. No gap, no gap in between there at all. Okay, tape that a little better and then we're gonna put masking tape over all of these so the glue doesn't let the, the strips stick to this. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the answer. And I fixed my little dip right there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you can still see where there's just a teeny bit of space right there. I fixed it. Okay, so I'm going to try to get these stations trued up, and I'm putting the level on here, and nothing's straight. Nothing. Uh, I can push that one just a little bit, and that's straight up and down now. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to put this batten right in the middle here, and uh, put a screw in here to hold it, and... Uh, then we're going to try to start truing these up off this one. This one's about the center. It is the center. Okay. I just got a cedar bat, and this is actually like one of the strips I would use. Um, one I have left over from some time ago. So my biggest thing is I just want to make sure I've got it long enough to go to all the stations. And I do enough, plenty enough, okay. So let's put a little screw in here. that center right on there but I got my line coming up here so I can see where I'm at I'm pretty much right in the center of that so let's get a just a little screw down in there I'm just going to use some little one inch screws it doesn't have to be anything too crazy we just got to hold them hold them in place Now, I cut this dude out last night. It's a big tube from a, from a packing crate. I suppose you could, 
make something similar with a box or just almost anything, but you got to figure out what your distance is supposed to be in between here. And I believe if I remember from last night, right, it's 11 and um, 5 eighths. So anyway, that's how long I cut this dude. This is really stiff. It's really hard. I can't begin to crush it or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here and make sure that I've got my right distance in between the stations. Because with the way they're not straight up and down and bent and whatever, I just put this in here to sit it on, just to gain a little bit of height. Put it in here. And I'm thinking I should be able to at least get my correct distance in here. So when I measure that, I should, from inside here to outside here, should be a foot. Well, we're almost right there. Right there is it. So I know that's good. So now I'm going to drill another hole in this one over here. And part of the trick right now is getting this dude lined up. That's good enough. So I'm squeezing those together. I don't want to go crazy put these in here tight because at a point I'm going to have to pull them out. Now, it's just like right at a foot, right there. So I'm good with that. Now, I can tell looking at this that it's, I'm wide on, on this side compared to that side. But we'll fix that later. And I've got a batten over here. I don't think you maybe can see it with the camera the way it is. But uh, once we get the, the tops in equal distance. Now see, and I can pull that, it pulls the other one, and then I can get them straight up and down. Once I do that, then we can use battens on the sides and get the, the correct spacing on the sides and on the shear line. So I'm just gonna keep coming down here. Now, did I, did I help myself with that? We're real close, I'm just almost on the bubble there. Real close. It's not right. It needs to go that way. Okay. You see how much that moved? <laughs> Look at that. That's nutty. When I push it together, though, let's see if we get... Boy, that was really off. It's a foot at the bottom. It should be a foot at the top. That's better. Way better. Okay, I'm just going to have to hold that there. I saw somebody working on their canoe and they had a, a shelf out uh, off of the strong back. I'm going to do that. You get so many tools and stuff down there that you got to have all the time rather than run around the shop looking for them. Okay. You see, I'm way better with that now. Now between the two of these, we ought to be out to 24 inches. 
Boy, we're within an eighth of an inch. I'm okay with that. I'm pre-drilling these. I don't want these screws going all over the place, and it's pretty easy to pretty easy to split cedar and a little cedar batten like this. Wouldn't take much. some point this should kind of pull itself up true. Yeah, that's working. That's way better. Way better. That one went on screwing yet. Yeah, that's working. Let's go back on the other side. We'll work, work over each end. Work our way out to the ends, but look at that, how that pulled that in there nice and tight. top there it looks real straight we don't have any dips going like that it's a good sign it's a good sign all right now uh, that pull this one into shape look at that right on the bubble <laughs> I don't know if you can see that good 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 thanks for watching See you next time.